the Underdog Podcast. It's your host, T. Lee, and my co-host, Jack Cowden, will be live today, as usual. Was pulling up the act and like they couldn't see me. Now she want to clean me up like a squeegee. I told her that's on me, baby, like yellow BZ. With a peanut butter tear like a Reese. He's going to first reveal to all the obstacles he done. That's the underdog. They don't forget the underdog when they see me. I hit them with the John Cena, they can't see me. You may overlook this person, but the underdog is the one who's going to put in the word. It's over, you know? Because you have to lose to win, whether you think losing is right. a big event. Out of mind. All I'm saying, just be careful who you idolize. I'm kicking these scriptures just before the pain. Ain't no cap in my words, I go against the grain. So I always believe that, like, I took so many risks to make this thing happen, you know what I mean? I'm always working, bro. Like, uh, I just, like I said, I'm energy driven. The underdog can put you on your ass. The underdog can put you on game. The underdog can show you something that you didn't know. You can't go down. All you can do is go up. So are you going to stay where you at or are you going to move up? We are the bangers. We are the bangers. <laughs> Yo, yo, you already know what it is, man. Oh my God, I'm back at it again. You feel me? For real, for real, man. I'm feeling yellow bees right now, man. Second show of the day, man. It's the night show, man. We got my boy coming back from season one, episode 10, man, Gary Fuller. If you don't know, we're going to bring him in the right way, how we do it, the underdog way, man. You feel me? Real spear. I had a slight delay, man, but we finna, we finna put him on right now. You hear me? I ain't know. Get in there. Yeah, y'all see it. Uh, come here. I ain't playing no games, man. Stop, man. Making plays. Now streaming on the City to Series Network, TV.com, man. It's the $100 Podcast live right now. Yo, man, y'all already know what it is, man. Gary Fuller, man. We're going to bring him in here right now the right way, man. Y'all already know how we do it over here. You know I got to drop the beat, man. He wreck, man. Yo. What's going on? Yo, can you hear me? Yo, yo, I can hear you clear, man. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's yeah, man. Hey, uh, you guys, excuse my connection, man. I'm still on that road, man. Can you hear me uh, clearly now? Oh, yeah, you good, man. I can hear you loud and clear. All right, all right. What's the word, so, man? So, man. 
I ain't nothing, man. We just making it happen over here, man. It's an honor to have you back on the show again. You feel me? We were speaking yeah, last year. You feel me? We we was we was on um, just starting out the platform. You know, now we on season three. We turned all the way up now, man. New everything, new platform. You know, you feel me? Nah, but yeah. most definitely, bro. You know, definitely got a combo to have, man. We ain't talking probably about half a year you feel me we hit you early last year yeah it's been but, um, a yeah man we just gonna pick back right back up where we left off you know so um like i said appreciate you tapping in you know since we last sat down you know what are some of the things 2022 opened your eyes to that you know gave you more room to grow and that you learn uh man it's, it's, it's been a long it's been a long year bro it's been a real long year, man. One thing I learned, bro, is that if you don't get it, if you don't get up off your ass and go get it on your own, bro, it ain't gonna happen for you. You feel what I'm saying? Um, That's real. You gotta be, you gotta be disciplined out here, bro. You gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be your own super, superhero, bro. You feel what I'm saying? Cause nobody gonna hear you nothing, and you can't trust that everybody gonna have positive intent for you. But there is some people out here that do. But the yeah. ones that do. Gotta just gotta keep them around you, bro, because that's that's hella important in the times that we in right now. Nah, most definitely, bro. Like you know, knowing like people real genuine, but you know you'll be able to peak game just by reading people's actions and how they move and stuff like that. But it's definitely genuine people out here, and especially when they come with our people, you know, like it's like a yin right. yang. It's like a fifty fifty, you know, split down the middle type of situation. But um, where do you feel you at right now in your, in your chapter in life, you know, as we feel we all, you know, go through different chapters and phases in our life? Like, where does Gary Fuller feel like he is right now? Man, I feel like, I feel like I'm not exactly where I want, obviously, but I feel like I'm getting closer. Like, I feel like um, mm -hmm. I finally feel like I'm, I'm headed towards, like, the right direction now. I think the last time we talked, the last time we talked, man, it was, it was, it was shaping up to be good, but I had, you know, it still, I was, it was kind of, it was kind of shaky at the same time, man. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know what my future hold it, man. You feel me? Like it right. wasn't, you know, looking, it was looking possible, but then it was kind of looking shaky, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then once I went out west, that's when, that's when stuff started getting like exactly on track. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you hit that Travis Scott when I west. You feel me? For real. Nah, I feel that, bro. Nah, but I, I just feel like that's just growing and learning. That's a part of the process, though, bro. Like, everything ain't always going to have a clear vision to it. Like, you might have to dig through the, you know, move all the dirt off it to really see everything for what it is. You know? Exactly. Um. Man, where where you feel like you know you at now spiritually? Like how your energy sitting right now? It's it's easier for you to adjust from arena back outside than it is uh, coming from outdoor to arena. You feel what I'm saying? Cause right. It's just it's, it's way more craftier. Like it's you know you have to. It's almost like I had to unlearn what I learned. You feel me? I learn to relearn. Yeah. Yeah. I had to unlearn yeah. to relearn. Yeah. And That's so, crazy because uh, that was actually one of our first episodes in the first season was unlearn to relearn. That's yeah. that real. Yeah. Yeah, man. So uh, I think the, the, just the more experience I get, the more, the, the easier it gets. You feel what I'm saying? The more you do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That repetition behind it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like, mentally, how did 2022 prepare you for 23, though? Like, just going through the year and, and everything that you may have been faced with, like, how did you plan for the year to be like, all right, this is how I'm coming in 23. This this is really, you know, like, what, what's going to be the move? Um, So, I just had a point. Like, I just had a point in my life where I was just like, bro, like, something got to give. Like, I'm about to make some change. It's going to be the year that... I just come all the way up, and before the before 2023 started, I made sure like while I was still in 20, 2022, it just started shaping shaping myself up for what I wanted to be in 2023, like ahead of time, to where like when 2023 comes, 
you know, I'm already ready for, for yeah. what I'm trying to do. Like, I had to, I had to work on, like, my discipline, um, you know, my money management, that type of stuff, like any other regular person, you feel what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. And just, you know, just kind of, like, don't take no for an answer, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you just yeah. got to, like, I had to, I had to really just shift gears and just be like, bro, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go get it, regardless of whatever. You know for real, nah. By any means, man. And like, like you said, it's um, it's like it's like 23, 2022, It'd be like people are already gotta be working on it, but not not last minute. I said on the last episode or the episode before, I like man, people be trying to cram me in the last thirty seconds to me at night. Like I'm gonna be a whole new person. I'm a whole new me. Right. See, when them thirty, them thirty seconds. A lapse in this new year's nigga the same thing that will you it's nothing changed like right. you gotta already be putting it in place either you know the halfway mark be the six month mark which is is coming up real fast on us with 23 so it's right. like man you gotta at least be like in fall you working on something by the top of the year you booming you know like i don't ever get it people be waiting till like the last hour to be like, all right, man, I'm finna stop doing this. I'm finna make this how me sound good. But it's just like it, it gotta be work put behind it, bro. Yeah. So like for real, for real, I mean you can't oh yeah, go ahead, my bad. Nah, go ahead, bro. Go in. Oh, yeah, I mean like like what you were saying, bro, like you can't you can't manifest anything without putting that work behind it. Look, you won't get nothing from it. You feel what I'm saying? Like you really gotta, you gotta pray, you gotta manifest, you gotta know what you want. Then you really gotta actually put the action behind it and be ready to like handle what what comes with it. Cause you gonna get what comes with it first before you get what you want. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. And it might not even be the stuff you looking for when you getting it, but you just gotta still see it all the way through. You know? Um. Yeah. So what what are any obstacles you faced in twenty twenty two along the way from the last sit down we talked? Hell yeah, bro. Um, Yo. I think the last time we talked, uh, I think I was finishing up. I think I had just finished up my season with Carolina before I went out west. Yeah. And then um, bro, as soon as I as soon as I went out west to play for the Skyhawks, bro, it was on. Like the moment I landed, bro, it was. It was on, like yeah. it, was, it was on. It was nonstop. Like the, the flight, the flight was like it was about a seven and a half hour flight to get from Charlotte to Seattle. Um, I, like I flew in the same day that Biden was in town. Yeah, uh, a lot going on. I had to had to come off the plane, go straight to practice. We had practice that day. Um, and you know, as soon as, as soon as I got out there, it was it was on like right away. Uh, I got you know I got a new feel for. You know, that was my first time going out west. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was it was a bunch of stuff, man, going on. I had to I had to adjust. For real, bro. And it'd be like that last minute. I got to I gotta get my mind right for everything going on. Like, it just got to happen right then and there. Like, it'd be like no breather. Some situation, you ain't got no time to just breathe and shit. You just got to go, go along with the flow and just go along the way with it. Yeah. And that's exactly how it was. It was just like, you know, I didn't know what to expect. But as soon as I got off that plane, it was just like, it was just, it was time to, it was trying to get it. I had to, I had to kind of adjust to the situation, I, you know. Right. Nah, for real. So, what were some of the things you left in twenty two manifesting? You know, for this year that you seeing get put in motion, or you see, or you see coming together, you know, as we speak. Uh, I would say this. I'll say God. He been putting, he been putting the people in my life, bro. That I've been, you know, he been, put, he been surrounding me with the people that that that's going, you know. That's gonna get me to where I'm trying to go. Like, yeah. Uh, as soon as I came back from out, you know, from in Seattle and stuff, um, I met like I met some real good friends, you know, playing with the squad. Uh, yeah. You know, guys that played deep one, you know, guys that 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 did stuff that I didn't get a chance to do. So where it's like, you know, networking is, you know, networking is a whole ball game within itself. Then, yeah. um, um, you know, I got an NFL agent now. 
to where, you know, she it's a, it's a girl, too. It's a, it's a lady, a black woman. Yeah. She, she was doing her thing, too, man, and um, got an agent now. So I got I got trainers. I got people in my in my circle now to where, like, it's going to, you know, help me get to where I want to go. Like, I got like-minded people in my circle. You know, I got yeah, people. that's it right there. I was gonna drop, I was gonna drop the beat, but I was like, man, we gotta keep this going. But nah, that's good, bro. Like, everything come together, brother. The Legos about to build something, man. For real. So, oh, man, like, let's talk about the season with, with Sky Hawk. You know, what was your journey like being a part of that organization? And also, congratulations on the recent signing, you know, with the numbers sign. So that's major, bro. I mean, Um, so the Skyhawks organization, man, I, I, it was it was the break that I needed. Uh, like yeah. I was saying, like the last time we talked, it was looking shaky. Then I next thing you know, I got I got a, a message from the GM. He was like, "Yo, I heard you know I heard you was a free agent. Um, you know you want to come out here and stuff like that." Came out there. Um, you know it had its up and down, just like anything else. Like you know, right. I had we had agreements, disagreements. You know, with the coaches now, with the management and, and stuff like that from time to time. But overall, bro, it was it was what I needed. I mean, it was a platform. They they helped me get my name out there, kind of put yeah. me on the map in a way. Uh, you know, I got film. I got paid. You know, I, I shit, I was out west, bro, for a few months, you know, in the state of Washington. Just, yeah. The most, the most beautiful experience I ever had, bro, like at that point. And so, uh, overall, I mean, you feel me, like, ups and downs going to come regardless, but, like, the move was, was a, a much-needed move, man. And, uh, yeah. like, I, like I, you know, like I tell anybody else, bro, like, you know, it was worth it. It was worth, it was worth signing for that organization. You feel me? It was, it, you know, I got tested in all areas going out there. Nah, that's big, bro, because sometimes we need that challenge, you know, to give us that extra push to be great at what we're doing already. So, what you say? This is year five for you right now, playing in the league, right? Yeah. Okay, then. So, you know, what are you learning more about the league as you you know progressing through your career? Bunch of different stuff. Um, on the field, I'm learning that the game is for sure like more mental than physical. I mean, I already kind of knew that, but experience and experience and discipline is gonna be you know talent. Like if you if you got talent and you got Experience, you got discipline, you got the mental aspect of it. You're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be, you're gonna be fine. But off the field, I learned again. You kind of, you just kind of have to keep the right people around you for one. Um, it's different politics, like right? it's different. It's for show sure different politics, but um, yeah. like I, I could be, for example, with me and you, like we could be receiver. Let's say you play football, you play receiver. Um, let's say you could be better than me, but I got, you know, more fans or, or let's say I'm, you know, let's say I play, let's say, you know, we play for the team that's, that, that's in my hometown and, and I might like, bring more fans to the game. Like I might dress over you just cause it's a business. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And so I just learned, like, you just got to learn the business. You got to learn like, like the business aspect of it. Feel me? Um, the politics of it, like uh, sometimes, sometimes guys, sometimes coaches or, or people might put guy, different guys in positions just because you know they got a better relationship with them. For real, for real. Yeah. You feel me? Like I just had to learn, like to get in where you fit in. You feel what I'm saying? Now that real. When you keep saying you got to learn the business, this is business. That sounds just like. Anybody else doing like either in the music business or something? They always say, "Man, you got to learn the business. It's more than just making music. Like, is is business behind everything? Anything that make money." Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. You got you got to learn that business side, bro. You'll be last place, bro. Like, you can't get right. too caught up in football. You can't just get too caught up in just the music or, or the craft of right. it. You got to learn that business, bro. Because you'll uh -huh. learn. You'll learn. You'll, if you don't learn, you'll learn the hard way. Yeah, you feel me? Right. Right. For real. It be done took you way longer to get through the process when you could have learned the business and would have been way more ahead. So mm -hmm. 
being in Washington, you feel me, out west, long ways, you know, from from the old. Like, what was that experience like, you know, as you continue to travel, you know, the scenery and the vibes, you know, the people, et cetera? Uh, uh, I'll say this, like, you know, I feel like it's important. I feel like traveling, like, I learned that it's, it's important. It's important to travel, bro, because, um, like, being in the old, you know, people got, people kind of got their own little mindset of stuff. Um, you can kind of tell, like, the people who don't really get out a whole lot. You know, they, they only know what they see and what they around. And then going out west is kind of, you know, it's the same thing. Like, there's people out west that ain't never been to the East Coast, and, and yeah. they kind of suck in their ways and stuff like that. So where in my head, I'm like, man, look, you don't even know what world I even, you don't even know what world I come from. Like, you feel what I'm right. saying? Um, but it was definitely something I had to adjust to, though, because, like, where I was at, the town I was at, it was, like, about, like, two hours away from Seattle. It's a town called Wenatchee, uh, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as black folks, bro, we are already minorities in this country, bro. But you go out west, bro, you're going to really see what a minority look like, bro. Like, I felt like it, I, it probably was about 10, 15 black folks in the whole town, bro. Yeah. For real, for real. And, uh... It kind of took me a minute just to get used to, um, but I feel like, but I will say that there's some good people out there, though, like, like the love and the, and, and the genuine people in that town is different, because it's, it's a, it's a small city, but it's like a, uh, it's kind of like a vacation spot, like, it's a real right. nice city, like, you'll go out there, you're going, you know, I went out there jet skiing, clear water, you know, clean, clear water, mountains. Mountain View, uh, you know, it was nothing like it, for real, for real. But I had to, you know, once I adjusted, once I adjusted to it, it was pretty, it was pretty solid though. I ain't gonna lie to you, you know, just gotta, yeah. kind of gotta get used to it. Gotta get used to being around them, and you know, they got, they kind of gotta get used to being around black folks. Like you said, like some, some of them, they weren't really used to being around black folks. Some of them, but then, you know, some of them, you know, they love us. You feel me? Yeah. We like unicorns, yeah. but it's, it's like, you know, everybody embraces our culture, but not everybody is around black folks a lot. Yeah. You know? so, I feel uh, it. Yeah. So it was just, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty straight. You know, once I got adjusted and stuff like that, it, it was dope, bro. Like, it was a dope experience, bro, for real. So you basically just gave a culture shock, you know, like, you know what's what's some motivation of you again to people that you know that that's kind of afraid to step out their comfort zones. You know, like you was just saying, like you might travel somewhere and them people and I ain't really left like that, or you know, just being from the crib, like some people I ain't never been out with, like like actually live somewhere. It's one thing to visit, but to actually live in a different environment. Like, right. Well, I mean, my advice, bro, would be. Shoot, you gotta you gotta get uncomfortable to get comfortable. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's only one way to get comfortable. It got to the point where I can go anywhere. I can go out by myself if I want to. Like I'm comfortable yeah. with being dolo if I if I got to. You feel me? Like it's easy it's easy to go somewhere with friends and, and people that you're comfortable with, but you know, once you get the hard you get the hard stuff over with, everything everything gonna become easy. Like you have to mm. you have to step out your comfort zone and see what else is out there? It's only one way to kind of up your your IQ and your perspective on life. Nah, most definitely, bro. I felt you. You said that, like, bro, I can go anywhere by myself. Like, bro, I spent time in the Midwest for about like half a year, bro. I was in Minnesota by myself with nobody. Like, bro, in the winter time, bro, I used to be out there just sightseeing and just by myself, bro. I, I ain't never been to a museum. I'm in the museum or like. I was doing all type of stuff, bro. Like Minneapolis yeah. is a Minneapolis is an interesting, interesting city, bro. Like Minneapolis and St. Paul, like definitely, definitely yeah, different, yeah. bro. Yeah, it's different out there, dog. But you got I to, think you that's got, you got to live, bro. Yeah, yeah, and it's like at the time, yeah. like, bro, I went tripping about taking that risk, bro. That was just like, let's go, I'm ready, like for real. It just helped me get in a position of how I'm moving yeah. on. But, all right, so as you continue to train hard, keeping both your mental and physical intact, like, what keeps you focused, you know, as you, you take each game head on? Like, 
what ways you prepare like what's the routine uh shoot what i like to do like the night before a game i'm probably somewhere in the cut chilling not really doing too much um yeah because nine times out of ten it's, it's a lot on my mind um really just uh either at the crib or at the hotel you know if we on the road or wherever, wherever we at just post it up you know i'll, I'll watch film i'll watch film like watch film on myself watch film on the team i'm about to play again um kind of stay out in the way just kind of get my mind right you know nothing mm-hmm. too great um but yeah like cause my first game with the Skyhawks like I only really got like four and a half hours of sleep for real because you know Dang. especially when you you know you, you're doing a a new you know you're having a new experience and you, 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 you want the, you want the most out of your experience it can kind of mess with your head a little bit like you know what I'm saying um us again with a new squad or whatever the case may be, but um, you know before a game I just try to I try to just you know stretch. Just might might go through a little a little bit of small like just kind of little petty drills in the crib like you know my teammates or my or my girl or whoever just throw me like a a tennis ball or, or a little you know those little medicine squishy balls or something yeah. like drill or you know just doing just do some one of them petty drills but those small petty drills go a long way like a real long yeah. way like night before um and, you know just kind of get my get my mind right now that real that's like you still getting it in but you ain't being you ain't going too hard but you just sharpening your mind still to, to stay focused you know exactly so i exactly. noticed that you you continue to gain fans as your career steadily grows like what are some of your uh memorable moments from fans as you engage with the youth you know and give them your signature and like how I feel, you know, when they embrace your work out there on the field? Uh, it's a, it's a great feeling, bro. I ain't even gonna lie, bro, because to be honest, man, you know, I started, I started from really, like, I started from semi-pro, playing with, you know, fans at a game. Yeah. Um, you know, probably like 150 people there, like, you know, just maybe your girl might show up, some family. That's about it. I go from that to, you know, I got, now I got kids looking up to me as had his cameras around. Um, it's a you know it's a lit it's a real lit environment. Um, I feel like the most memorable for me when I was out there in Seattle, uh, just just interacting with the with the kids, hosting camps. I went to an elementary school, bro, and um, I loved it, bro. Like they love me. Um, yeah. They still ask about me. Like the teachers still reach out to me from time to time. They got a they got like a uh, they had like a, a class pet. Name the class pet after me, and yeah. stuff like that. You know, the stuff yeah. like that, bro. It, it go, it, it show you, it just shows you gratitude, bro. For real, for real. Uh, you know, they, they, they love me, man. Like, uh, I went, to, I went to, I, I went to that school. Well, I went to the school once, and then I went. Like, they had like a little field trip the second, uh, the next day. And when I walked in, like, you know, just people screaming my name and just kind of really excited to see me and stuff, bro. It was. It was it was like a feeling like no other, bro. I ain't never had uh, that experience until I played arena, bro. Like it's it's major, bro. It's real, for real. Like it's it's inspiring, it's real. Now that's real, bro. We deserve it, cause bro, looking at just catching up, doing you know my research and everything, bro. I see you've been doing big things, bro, since the last time we talked. You feel me? Yes, Most definitely, um. So how you feel? How you feel overall about your season? You know, with with the Skyhawks, how it went. Man, that yeah, that was a fun season, bro. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Like we uh, we would uh, we'll play a game, then we'll go out. Like we'll go out together. Um, like you know, we had like it was bar owners and stuff like that. They'll come to the games. Like it was just certain bar owners. They would get like season tickets and have like suites and stuff in the arena or whatever. Uh, we'll go to the bar. You know, they'll give us like free drinks, free shots, you know, just for showing up and stuff like that. Like he was all love, bro, for real, for real. Um, as far as, as far as on the field, the season went, it, it went, you know, it went, it went better than what I expected, bro. Like we, uh, we faced some adversity for real, like in the middle of the season because it, yeah. it was looking like we wasn't going to make the playoffs. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 
it was we had some fans, you know, talking crazy, you know. Uh, nah, yeah, for real. Little, you know, talking crazy, you know, you know how that goes. Talk, yep. You know. <laughs> and we ended up, we ended up, we can all wait to the playoffs. You know, we made it, and uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't finish. You know, we didn't, we didn't finish, but. Overall, I'll say, shoot, we had a better season than, than what we and what other people expected us to yeah, nah, for real, y'all made it to the playoffs, like you said. You feel me? From going to not thinking y'all gonna make it to making it, you know that that's that's yeah, big. Yeah. So like going all the way. Oh, go ahead. Nah, you would say going all the way. Yeah, going all the way, man. We fell short, and uh, I got hurt. I got hurt uh, like a couple of days, like that walk through before the championship game. So I, you know, I couldn't even, I couldn't even play. Oh uh, man. Yeah, so but I mean overall I you know, I'm 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 pleased with the season we had though, like with the guys, the group of guys that that I you know, I was with. You know, it was like a brotherhood for real. Yeah. Now nah, I can imagine, man. You feel me? Cause y'all out there putting in work in. You feel me? Everybody got something in common. Y'all got a common goal. Like that's how it's supposed to be. You know, teamwork for real. Yeah. You know. So any any memorable moments in 2022 you can recall on, you know, like I remember from the last and now, you know, you recall getting used to that wow and then, you know, completing the past, going over the wow. Like, you know, what what happened on, you know, this season, 2022? Uh I would say I would say, man, just uh my most memorable moments, man. I mean I, I can really I can really go on and on. Like right. there's, a of, there's a bunch of different moments I can probably point out. I would say overall, bro, like it was just it's kinda like you know, it's kinda like an NFL lifestyle but just smaller. Like, you know, not as much money. Right. Um, but it's, it's still kind of it's still kind of the same thing. Like you get like the same type, somewhat of the same type of experience and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But shoot, man, this this should be time, bro. Real, real. Nah, that was up, bro. So like, even with um. Like you say, last season, you know, it sounded like y'all y'all done had an underdog game. Like, was there any underdog games? You know, uh, it was a matchup, and where y'all may have been down, but overcame the opponents. Like y'all just thought the game might was over, or y'all just shut back. Oh yeah, for sure. We uh we made history out there. Um, for example, it's a, it's a team called the Idaho Horsemen. Um, out yeah. there in Boise. Basically, to break it down, they uh, I think they about, I think they like three time, three time national champions. Uh, they were, I think at the time they were like twenty six and one at home. Like they home, they home still advantage is crazy. Like playing playing yeah. at their arena, bro. Like was, was almost like it felt like playing at at like Alabama or something. Like they loud, they gonna talk, they yeah. gonna talk crazy. I'm talking about they gonna talk yeah, talk real crazy. And uh, I'll say the underdog game would had to had to been it actually had two of them. Yeah. Um. To, to break it down, the first time we played them, we lost. You know, because they, you know, they we played them at we played them on the road. Yeah. Um. Uh, they twenty six at one. We was they, I mean they twenty six and one at home. Uh. We kind of turned the ball over a lot. Long story short, we lost, and you know they we we ended up playing them at home, and we had to beat them at home to get in the playoffs. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? And um, we ended up beating them at home, and it was a good game. Like we ended up beating them at home, uh, and that was our that was our first time beating them in franchise history. Like they had they hadn't beat them in like four years. That was our first time yeah. beating them in franchise history. We beat them at home, and then we had them we had them first round in the playoffs. We had to go back to Boise and beat them on the um uh, and beat them on the road. Beat them yeah. again. <laughs> and they got to the oh man! Oh yeah, yeah, I know them fans gonna feel that. They go, I always know what's going on. Real, yeah. Man, we, I know uh, the energy was crazy when they got whooped the first time, and then come back again. <laughs> yeah, that second time we beat them at they at they arena, and um, yeah, you know, we had we at first we at first we was blowing them out. We had fans oh, leaving. Man. 
But then I, I will say, I will say they had a comeback. They made a little comeback. We ended up like yeah. we, we still ended up beating about by, by ten, but we really had about like thirty. We kind of we low key like let them come back a little bit, but we still, you yeah. know, we still got the win. Mm-hmm. Real. So, how do you feel about the new transition of now being a part of the Columbus Lions organization? Man, it's, it's major, bro. It's major to me because. Um, before I went to Dallas, my rookie season, um, I had tried out. I had tried out for Columbus before, and I'm talking about what's the tryout? Rented a car, drove from the O to Columbus. Yeah. Um, you know, got a room or whatever. Stayed at the team hotel. I, you know, got like a little, you know, discount, whatever. Well, I felt like, you know, at, at the time, I felt like I balled at the at the workout. You know, I had two one-handed catches and stuff like that, but I still got cut. And um, basically they were saying, hey, you know, we're just looking for guys for more experience, you know, because how the game goes. Um, got cut, and then next day, you know, I spin back around, and, and now I'm signed. You know, uh, one of my head coaches that I played with, he, he's the head coach there now. Yeah. Um, known him for some years. He, he kind of seen me come. Like, he was, he coached me my my second year. Back when I had a rough year, only dressed like one game and stuff, he was the head coach then. Yeah. Kind of see how far you seen how far I came, and I, I went down there recently had a workout and got signed. And, um, you know, it's I feel like I feel like it's kind of it's kind of put up a shut up now though. Uh, it's a huge opportunity, but like now it, it, it don't get no easier. Um, yeah. I heard you know, word on the street they got they got ten a they got ten AFL receivers coming in, three former NFL receivers coming in. So yeah. That's why I'm on that road to Cleveland right now to get on that grind and train, train, you know, train with my team and stuff, train with my people and get right, bro, because uh, this, this, this is a big opportunity right here. Yeah. Yeah, I already know you ain't playing, man. It's up now, for real, all the way in. All the way. So – what what does Gary Fuller feel like? You know, you'll be bringing to the table to the Lions. You know, as a player. Um, I, I, I feel like I still got my youth. I feel like I still got athleticism, um, speed, and talent and stuff. But now I feel like I got experience and I got I got more mental knowledge of the game and stuff. So now I feel like I can bring a whole lot more to the table, going hand to hand. Um, so I, I feel like. I feel like now, you know, everything happens for a reason. Got to make you wait for a reason, you know. And now I feel like I feel like the time is now, though. I feel like I can bring a lot to the table now. Most definitely, bro. So, like, do you ever set any goals you want to accomplish, you know, when you plan these seasons? You know, if so, like, what are some of them goals, you know, you would like to share, like, uh, you know, that you overachieve, you know, each season you play? If any, small or, you know, big. Um, I always play to win, and, uh, you know, I always play to get a ring. Um, but, you know, I, I will say I, I do look forward to individual stats as well, just like anybody else. Like, I want to feel like I, uh, I don't really have any specific, I don't have any specific, uh, you know, goals for stats, you know, but right. I like to, I like to score touchdowns, I like to make plays, I like to feel like I'm involved and I'm helping my team win. Feel what I'm saying like it, it's, it's no worse feeling than playing a game and you feel like you ain't getting nothing. Like you ain't you ain't catch the ball, you ain't score, get no first down. I mean, block, right. stop. You know right. What I'm so I feel like as long as I feel like I feel like as long as I contributed in some type of way, um, you know, in a big way, actually, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm pretty, I'm pretty solid. Nah, for real, that's what's up, man. So, like, for the aspiring athletes, you know, get them the day in the life of a football player. Like, what's your schedules be like? So, uh, for the aspiring, aspiring athlete, bro, just know it's a job. It's a job just like anything else. Like, like my schedule, especially when I get to Cleveland, you know, I'm on the way to Cleveland right now. Yeah. Um, I train about five days a week, um, five days a week. Three, three times I do, I, I train with my position coach. Shout out to my boy CT. Um, he's a former player. He played for the Cleveland Gladiators, played in the AFL, played D1 for Indiana in the, uh, in the Big Ten. 
Yeah. He, 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 was, a, he was a dog, too. Um, dog receiver. Uh, so, but long story short, yeah, position coach, you know, I do position stuff three times a week, and then, but I'm doing weights five times a day. I mean, yeah. five times a week. Five times a week. Um, so, you know, I say all that to say, like, especially being that I'm not, you know, I'm not getting paid for football during the off season, so I might have to spend about three and a half, four hours on, on football alone and then go go make some money. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like I got about two or three jobs at once. Yeah. Um. Then, you know, with all this traveling, I you know, I, I got to find ways to make my money on the, on the go. So when I get to Cleveland, you know, whatever it is, uh, I have, you know, like an online job option or whatever, um, coaching stuff and shoot, you know, delivery stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a, it's a full-time job, bro. Like, for real, yeah. for real. Like, like, the training, you got to, like, even eat. You got to eat a certain type of way. You got to eat in a certain type of mouth. Like, for real. Like, eating, eating almost, like, eating almost feels like a job now. Like, you know? Like, it's almost like that. I can't even get up till I finish this plate because I got to I gotta have a certain amount of protein a day. Yeah. And, you know, for somebody trying to elevate, if you're trying to elevate, you got to do, you got to eat. You got to put in that work. Whatever you put in, it's going to get out of it. Well, it's definitely got to maintain the game, bro. But just hearing your story, bro, already, like, you're just making a way, you know, just just to get it done, bro. But I definitely feel like, bro, I didn't know you're gonna kick the door down, bro. You definitely gonna make it. You feel me? All the sacrifices I'm hearing and stuff already, bro. Like, you know, as you doing it, you feel me? Like you say, whether it's up or down day, but you sticking to the script to know what got to be done to get, you know, to get the. You feel me? Right. So I'm right. definitely, bro. Yeah, man. I appreciate that, bro. And you know, cause. Especially in, in this predicament, bro, it's, I had to be my, before I had an agent, I had to be my own agent. I had to be yeah. my own trainer. I had yeah. to be my own trainer before I had a trainer. I had to be my own, a lot of stuff. Yeah. So it's like, you know, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't play football in high school, you know, uh, walked on in college, got a little yeah. bit of experience then had to, had to jump in the arena game, try out. You know, I, I had to, I had to come in, like you said, I had to come in kick the door down through the, through the back way. I had to come in yeah, through the back way. For real. Um, and and it's, it's harder. So, you know, when, when you don't have those those accolades of, you know, playing D1 or doing this or knowing this person or whatever, whatever, you got to you gotta work twice as harder, bro. And um, you got to come in through the back door. Like, I feel like I got to, in a way, kind of sneak my way into the NFL or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's why this story is going to be so amazing when you make it, though, bro, because it's like when you get a game, you give it, when you get a story, bro, it's just like, you know, with, with whoever trying to inspire to do it, it's like there's no excuses. It can't be done. You might have to work harder, like you said, but, you know, it's going to happen. You feel me? Um, but, now nah, I'm going to say, too, uh, I'm trying to remember, man. But nah, definitely gotta give you a flower, bro. You know what I mean? Um, but nah, you know, I would say like when you were saying having an age, when he had an age, you had to you had to manage everything you had going on. That just everything you saying to remind me of an artist lifestyle. An artist has to be everything they are. You have to have something going on to get a manager. You'll be thinking like a manager mean they gonna book, so they gonna do all that. Nah, they just managing your right and, mm -hmm. and basically like that's 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 the truth like with the music industry or sports or whatever you're doing your agent your manager is kind of like your representative it's like basically like having your your lawyer that's that's your uh your your representative your representation because yeah. uh it got to a point where a lot of you know t certain teams they're not gonna talk they're not gonna talk to you directly you feel mm -hmm. because I mean, everybody think that they, that they good at what they do. You feel me? So they, they, you know, that's what that agent is for. Like somebody who's certified or a manager, or somebody who's certified, been in the business, know the game. If yeah. they can vouch, if they can vouch for you, then it, you know, it goes way, way further than than just you vouching for yourself. You feel what I'm saying? For real. Yeah. Nah, I get that, bro. I was like. 
Yeah, that that representative, bro, to have somebody speak for you to you know to to do what you you know you, you're trying to get done. Um. So, like, what are some of the things you you know you working on to improve your game over time, though? Because your network, your network is your net worth. You feel me? For real. That's a fact. That's a huge fact, bro. Huge so, like, nah, most definitely, bro. You know, it, it's like building a relationship with people. You know, it's very important. Um, What do you know that the game of football by, you know, way of making it a lifestyle has given you you know that you can carry with you for a lifetime uh i ain't gonna lie bro this this game really like man me up a lot it man me up it let me know like look first of all like working out different weights for a man bro is important anyway whether you know whether i'm playing football or not but yeah when you have a goal when you have a goal you know I, i'm lifting you know i'm you know, I'm lifting differently now. Like I'm, I'm more consistent. Like it, it, it helps when you have a goal. Um, I'll say it manned me up. Uh, networking, of course. Like you know, I feel like I'm set up now. Shout out to my boy. Shout out to my boy Jay too, man. Um, one of my teammates out there in Wenatchee. Uh, you know, shout out to him because. I feel like he, he done, you know, just, just, just me and having good friends like him, you know, him and my boy EJ out there just having good friends like them, it, it helped me a lot in ways because, you know, he played D1, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he played, he played he played for Youngstown, and, you know, he played, he, he got experience versus, versus Pitt in Ohio State and, and all the type of people. So, um, just being good people, who, you know, who can, who, who, who genuinely want what, what's best for you and for themselves, you know what I'm saying? Um, nah, so that's real. It's a it's a lot of different stuff that I'm about to take with me after I'm done, like networking. You know, since I'm a, a you know, it's, life is about the Bible of the finish. So I'm yeah. I'm gonna yeah, I'm I'm keep that grind going. Um, I probably you know I you know I can I can even come out with with a uh with a different type of profession when I'm done too. Like I, I like since since I've been doing it, I low key think. After I'm done, I probably can become an agent myself. I had to represent myself. Yeah. You know what I'm 
So I might even come out with a whole different profession when I'm done playing as well. So it's just it's a bunch of it's a bunch of different stuff like that I that I that that I can take with me when I'm done. You feel me? Coaching, training, you know, all types of stuff. Yeah, for real. So man, what's up and coming for you, bro? You know what the schedule is looking like right now? Shoot, I should be in Cleveland about like another hour or no. I should be in Cleveland about forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's gonna post up. So, you know, we ain't gonna do too much. Just gonna do a little something though. We'll probably, you know, step out a little something just by um but then Monday, get right back to it. Get back to the ground. I mean I might even do I might get a little something in tomorrow. But uh when the weekday comes I'm, I'm for sure on it. You know, I'm gonna be grinding, gonna be working. I'll be in Cleveland I'll be in Cleveland probably about for about a month and a half until training camp start. Training camp start for me uh, mid April, so I'll be here. For yeah. I'll be in Cleveland for a little bit. Training, training can't work and get right. You know, I'm a, I'm in a real good situation in Cleveland. Um, yeah. You know, so just gonna you know just gonna follow the schedule, follow the plan. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, bro. Also, shout out to Trail Therapy TV. What's up and coming from the show, you know, for the show 2023? Like, what you what you got in the work for? Uh, me and my boys, man, we've been talking about, uh, you know, bringing, bringing a, start up a, part, a podcast, man, and, and probably shooting it in Cleveland because where we stay, uh, we got, like, we got, like, the Brown Stadium view, the real nice stadium. Yeah. You know, what happened last time, uh, but, you know, I, I, I didn't stay, you know, I didn't stay consistent. Like, you know, how like how y'all boys doing it. Um, I had kind of had too much too much going on. I was trying to, like, I, I started up with my boy in Charlotte. Yeah. But just, uh, it was just so much going on, man. I, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to stick with it. But this, this go around. And then also, I'll say I wanted some co-hosts. You know, I didn't want to. Yeah. Like, the way I was doing it, I was, like, by myself. And uh, I kind of, you know, I, it's better off just having some co-hosts to where I can have some conversation going to where I'm, you know, talking to people, not just talking to the camera or just talking to fans and stuff. Yeah. But for sure, I'm, I'm definitely, I definitely plan to, to do some stuff with the podcast work, man. You got to come on my show too, man. You already know. Nah, most definitely, bro. Definitely appreciate the invite, man, whenever. Um. Like I say, bro, you know what I mean? We definitely had to bring you back on to give you flowers, man. Like I say. It's an honor to have you on the show. You know, we wish you much success, you know, on your journey on the way to the top, bro. You know what I mean? I already know you're going to make it anyway. You know, as but not least, you know, being an underdog, What's one of the ways you know you always gonna come out come out on top no matter what? Shoot, man, you know hard work always beats talent, bro. So if you got talent and hard work, you're gonna be unstoppable, bro. Like you just gotta one thing about it, you just gotta have that faith in God, bro. That's that's key. That's really just the key to it, bro. Like yeah. it ain't gonna be you know, everybody just like shout out to you for just kind of, you know, giving me my flowers and my support. Uh because Everybody don't do that, and yeah. so uh, that's 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 what's big about being an underdog because everybody's not gonna believe or you know really kind of see it in you. You feel me? Yeah. You gotta see it in yourself. Like I feel like that's the major key to being an underdog. Just, you gotta see it and you gotta see it for yourself. And you gotta you know have that faith in God. Like God has His ways of showing you. Like look, it don't matter. They don't see what I, what you saying. Yeah. But you you know what's going on. So it's like you just gotta. Just gotta stick to the script, bro. For real, for real. Cause everybody's not gonna show gratitude. Everybody's not gonna believe you. You're not gonna have, you know, positive things to probably say about you and stuff like that. Yeah. Really. A lot of times, I feel like people do that cause they own fears. And me, just yeah. personally, bro, I don't know. I can't talk about another man and his motion, bro, because I'm not the one going through it. I'm not going through all this stuff. So why am I to say what's going to work for you or not? Am I in uh, training with you? Am I doing all this stuff with you now? Am I taking that risk with you now? You know what I'm saying? So I can't sit there and tell you, oh, nah, it ain't going to work, you know, based off what I think and feel. Thinking, thinking and feelings ain't going to do nothing. 
you know, to help your situation and none at all. So it's best people just keep their opinions to themselves, bro. It's not a fact because you you don't know what the turnout gonna be. You can't tell the future. I don't think nobody can tell the future, you know. So exactly. no, nah, bro, that's exactly. definitely how I look at it, but man definitely appreciate having you on bro again dog like i say man say trials and, and and time up there in cleveland bro and just enjoy yourself and keep working hard bro it's it's coming you know what i mean yes sir man i appreciate that bro. i appreciate you having me back on too man for real man. yeah had to spin the block on you again because you helped support us when we first started out so now that we on another platform and you know everything looking a little bit more legit you know, we had to, it, it was, you know, you had to do it, bro. It was mandatory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Hey, keep keep doing your thing as well, bro. Keep doing your thing, bro. Y'all got to set up right here. Nah, most definitely, man. Like I say, bro, this was episode 19, season three, man. You know what I mean? It's no let up, man. Future and Gary Fuller underscore on IG, man.